This is actually one of the best values in California. It's a consistently super good wine. I usually love it. My name is Matthew Horky. For the last six years, I've been traveling around the world, tasting thousands of wines per year in search of the most unique, exciting, and expensive bottles on the planet. And today, I'm sharing a red wine blend that you really need to know about. And that red blend is a GSM. The GSM blend is one of the most famous red wine blends in the world. It stands for Grenache, Syrah, Morvedre, because these are the varieties that typically make up the blend. Although there are other grapes involved too, like Cunois, Carignan, Cinso, and a myriad of other varieties. Probably the most well-known, most inexpensive GSM is the Cote de Rhone from the south of France. You'll find these wines in Spain, South Africa, Australia, and America. The wines tend to be a little bit bigger, a little bit meatier, a little bit spicier, a little bit higher in alcohol. But the real key for GSMs is a lot of them are pretty ripe fruit, easy to enjoy, and are meant to be drunk younger. That's what I really appreciate. You don't need to lay them down in the cellar for a super long time. But again, the term GSM is confusing because wines can be called GSM blends and sometimes don't contain all those varieties. Some might be mostly Grenache with a little bit of Syrah. Some might be more Vedra Syrah, maybe 100% more Vedra. It's really confusing to the average consumer. These are wines that go great with grilled meats, charcuterie, cheeses. I have several wines here from these three varieties. I'm gonna taste them separately and then finally taste a GSM blend. I'm gonna show you what all those grapes bring to the table. I'm tasting out of my Gabriel Glass Standard Editions. Thanks to Gabriel Glass for actually sending me these. I already had the Gold Editions, but they tend to be quite thin and delicate. The Standard are a little bit heftier. That's why I like them, but you still have the same shape. I'll put a link in the description box below. I really like these glasses. Let's start with Grenache. This is the Coupe Grenache 2018 from Santa Barbara County in California. 30 bucks. In general, Grenache is going to be a little more, bring a little more fruitiness, a little bit more delicate character to the GSM blend. Grenache is a really funny grape. I actually really like it a lot. Think of more red fruit type of flavors, more strawberry, more, more Kirsch cherry type of flavors, but you're also going to get like these thyme and sage notes usually, and they can either be super simple or they can be extremely complex. I love this producer in Santa Barbara County, but I've never tasted their Grenache, so let's give this a go. Uh, if it's true Grenache, it should be light in color. Doesn't It's not going to be dark. It literally smells like baked strawberries, cherry, meat. Almost if you had like <laughs> beef jerky and you dipped it in like a strawberry jam and maybe, you know, like a, a Kirsch cherry sauce, a Kirsch cherry uh, mixture for some alcohol. <laughs> Earthy, leathery. Grenache can be really round and silky on the palate, kind of like Pinot Noir, except the alcohol is, is a little bit higher. What is this? Alcohol is 14%. So not as delicate as a Pinot Noir, has a little bit of chewy tannin, but really good stuff. For Grenache, you're gonna look for appellations like Chateauneuf de Pop. Some of the best Chateauneuf de Pops are mostly Grenache. You can also look in Spain where the grape is called Garnacha and there's some beautiful ones. Really fun and inexpensive to expensive and age-worthy. Another region I like is Sardinia in Italy where the grape goes by the name Cananao. You can also find beautiful ones in places like South Africa, Australia, again, California and Washington State as well. Next up, same producer. This is the Coupe Syrah 2019 Central Coast, 20 bucks. This is actually one of the best values in California. It's a consistently super good wine. I usually love it. And the GSM blend, so they say Syrah brings color to the blend because in the past, people wanted red wines with a lot of color. That's a little bit less the case today as people are seeking more delicate, more medium body type of wines. Syrah can be extremely meaty, extremely leathery, extremely peppery. Syrah also has a little bit of a savage note almost like brush, twig even. Like I used to walk around in the forest or twigs. And Syrah usually has chewy tannins. Let me see about this one. Although this is a more inexpensive Syrah. Extremely peppery, extremely meaty, almost like a bacon fat type component, even hickory. Good wine. Syrah has like these chewy tannins. I'm gonna give you an insider tip. In California, you can get some tremendous Syrahs because producers really care about the variety, but it's, it's a little bit harder to sell than Cabernet Merlot or Pinot Noir. I think this is an outstanding, 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 outstanding effort for 20 bucks. 
You can get great Syrahs all over the world. Some of the benchmarks come from France. They come from appellations like Cote Roti, Hermitage, Saint Joseph, and Cornas. There are also some beautiful ones made in the Languedoc Roussillon. Australia is famous for making fabulous Shiraz, in addition to California and Washington State. Next up is Morvedra. Morvedra, also known as Mataro in places like Australia and sometimes South Africa. Even seen it in Cyprus labeled as Mataro. Usually adds more tannin, more spice to the blend. This is the Tablas Creek Vineyard 2019 Morvedra from Paso Robles, California. This is like a club only exclusive wine. I'm excited to taste it. Although, Morvedra, like those ones you see in Humilla and Yecla in Spain, great values if you want big red wines, Humilla and Yecla. But they're usually big and high in alcohol. This is only 13%, so I'm interested to see how it tastes. Hot tip, if you want to sound like an insider, you don't have to say Morvedra, just say Morved. Sounds cool. Okay, this isn't as deep in color as I'm accustomed to in Morvedra. I'm, I'm, I'm really interested. Morved can bring a lot of spice, but can be really quite animally, quite gamey. If you ever spelled venison before, sometimes that's what Morvedra reminds me of. This has a little bit of the animal characteristic, but to me, this actually smells more like an old world Pinot Noir. This is not a typical Morvedra for me. Leathery, a little bit meaty, but can get some strawberry notes. Not baked strawberry, more fresh strawberry, so I'm quite surprised. On the palate, it does remind me of typical Morvedra. How do I explain it? Let's compare it to leather. Grenache is like a nice, fine, polished leather shoe, leather handbag. Whereas you get in a Syrah and especially more Morvedra, it's more like that old, worn leather, something like a horse saddle or old cowboy boots, just kind of tough guy wine. Really brings a lot of toughness and spice to the table. And it's got tannins. You're going to want meat with this kind of wine. You don't see too many wines labeled just as Morvedra. Some of the most common appellations are Bandol in the south of France, Humilla and Yecla in the south of Spain, and I've tasted some beautiful ones from California and even Australia. Next up, let's have it with everything blended together and see if I pick up some of the characteristics I got in these wines. This is a Chateauneuf de Pop, one of the most famous GSMs in the world. This is the Domaine La Baroche. Chateauneuf de Pop, Julien Bordeaux, 2019. This is Grenache Syrah Morvedra. I think there are a small amount of other grapes, but it's predominantly a GSM. I love this producer, was there recently. I'll drop a link to a video I did of when I was there in the description box. Not cheap wines, but I really like them. Concentrated, rich, just, just delicious type of wines. Let's see this. Sometimes it doesn't work out when I'm doing tastings like this, but this actually brings everything together. I get strawberry. I get a little bit kind of blackberry from Syrah. A lot of meatiness, gaminess. I mean, I think this was the most complex wine out of the out of the four so far. Kind of like the stone flintiness, mineralness. Shut enough to pop sometimes can be a little bit too fat, a little bit too big, a little bit too high in alcohol. This is just beautiful. It's full bodied, it's full of flavor, but yet it's not too big. It's a wine that I just kind of want to keep going back and drinking over and over and over again. Really good. I want this wine with a barbecue. That's what I want. Just <laughs> outstanding stuff. Oh, this really tied everything together. Had some strawberry red fruit of the Grenache, had some blackberry type flavors, has the tannin, the gaminess of the Morvedra, and it just has incredible length. This is a super good wine. It's the most expensive, but you know what? You're kind of paying for what you're getting. You're, you know, it's good wine. Two of the most famous and prestigious old world regions for GSM blends are Chateauneuf de Pop in France and Priorat in Spain. But again, there are great GSM blends made in warmer climates around the world. I especially like ones in California and Australia. This right here is an excellent new world GSM, the Tablas Creek Spirit de Tablas 2019. I just drank it all because it's so good. And all these wines have a place. This Syrah, it's going to be beautiful on a Wednesday night. It was well as this Grenache. More Vedra, maybe I lay it down a little bit longer. The Chateauneuf de Pop is versatile because, man, I can drink it now or I can lay it down and age it. It's really a great wine. I'd love to know, what do you think of the GSM blend? Have you heard of it before? Do you have any favorite regions for GSM blends? Any favorite wines? I'd love to hear. Drop it in the comments below. That helps other people that watch the videos too. Your suggestions. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you soon.